Yes, yes. Okay, so um, welcome everybody uh, to uh, today's Schubert seminar. I'll start with some um, announcements. Uh, so first of all, uh, we are contemplating to have some early career uh, yeah, talks by early career Schubert calculators similar to last fall. Um, so just like uh, last year, uh, nominations are very welcome with the usual rules. Everybody can nominate anybody, including themselves and their students and, um, and so on. And should we get uh, more nominations than we can accommodate, well, then we will give uh, preference to people on the job market. But um, last year, we didn't get more people than we could accommodate. So, um, so please just uh, keep the nominations coming. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> then today, uh, we are very happy to have uh, Matthew Samuel speak, uh, Rutgers PSD. Um, he will speak about a molev sagan type formula for double super polynomials. So please take it away, Samuel. Uh, Matthew, sorry. Uh, all right. I'd, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me first. I'm very happy to be here. Um, my slides... I'm going to apologize in advance, they're very detailed. They're intended to be looked at afterwards. Uh, so you'll be able to reproduce everything um, from scratch from the slides. Um, hang on a second. I'm going to start with an introduction to uh, Schubert polynomials and related topics. So uh, start at the very beginning. We're going to start by defining the polynomial ring in infinitely many variables. Uh, so they're x variables indexed by positive integers. And we're not going to write the indices all the time when we write the name of the ring. So we're just going to call this ring ZX. And S infinity is the group of permutations of the positive integers that fix all but finitely many elements. So we can consider this as the union of SN for all N by saying that SN is a subgroup of S infinity. It's the subgroup such that uh, w is an Sn if Wi equals i for all i greater than n. Uh, the adjacent transpositions are denoted by Si. These exchange i and i plus 1. Other transpositions, not necessarily adjacent, are denoted by Tij. These exchange i and j. And the length of a permutation w in S infinity is denoted by Lw. And that's the number of inversions. So it's going to be the length of a reduced expression. So we're considering an action of S infinity on ZX that just permutes the indices. So if we apply the permutation W to the variable XI, you get X of WI. So I'm going to give a very explicit example. We have P equals X1 squared plus X2 squared plus X2, X3. Then if W is 1, 3, 2, you apply it and you get x1 squared plus x4 squared plus x4, x3. So next, I'm going to define the divided difference operators. So again, we let si be the adjacent transposition for some positive integer i. And we define a divided difference operator partial i, which sends polynomials to polynomials. By defining partial i applied to p, as p minus sip over xi minus xi plus one. So we're taking p, subtracting sip, and divided by the difference. And uh, just to give an example, if we apply partial one to x1 cubed, x1 cubed minus x2 cubed over x1 minus x2, which is x1 squared plus x1 x2 plus x2 squared. So a divided difference operators satisfy certain important relations. In particular, they square to zero. Partial i and partial j commute if i and j differ by more than one. And we have the braid relation, partial i, partial i plus one, partial i, equals partial i plus one, partial i, partial i plus one. So because of these relations, we can define composite divided difference operators that are products of these that are indexed by S infinity. So we write, for U and S infinity, we write U 
as a minimal product of adjacent transpositions. So this is a reduced expression. And we take the same indices and use the divided difference operators associated to those indices and take the product in the same order to get partial u. And because of the relations, this does not depend on the choice of expression. So we have defined divided difference operators partial u for any u in S infinity. So divided difference operators have a product rule, which is also called the Leibniz formula. If you apply partial w to the product pq, it expands as a sum over all u in S infinity of partial u applied to p times this new operator, partial uw applied to q. So this is the partial uw is a skew divided difference operator, which depends on two permutations. And I believe it was originally studied by McDonald. So my dissertation was entitled, entitled the Leibniz formula for divided difference operators. Uh, so you're going to be hearing a lot about the Leibniz formula, uh, but the dissertation was not restricted solely to type A. So now I'm going to define Schubert polynomials explicitly. So first we define a permutation W0 of N, which is the longest element of Sn plus one or the reversal permutation. And we associate to it a Schubert polynomial SW0 of N of X as the product as I goes from one to N of XI to the N plus one minus I. So that little squiggle is indeed an S, it's just in the fractor font. So I gave an example for n equals three, s four three two one of x, so x one's q x one cubed x two squared x three. So this is, is in general a staircase monomial with decreasing powers. So to define a general Schubert polynomial, we fix n and consider permutations u and s n plus one. And there's a formula for defining the Schubert polynomial s u of x. It's partially u inverse w0n applied to sw0n of x. Now, this may on the face of it appear to depend on n, but it does not. We obtain the same Schubert polynomial if we start with a larger symmetric group. So Schubert polynomials indeed can be considered to be indexed by the group s infinity. And I'll mention that they were introduced by Lesko and Schutzenberger in 1982. So some properties, Schubert polynomials, they form a Z basis of the polynomial ring. SW of X is a homogeneous polynomial of degree LW with non-negative integer coefficients. And we have this formula that allows us to express other polynomials in terms of Schubert polynomials. Partially U applied to SV of X and setting X to zero gives us one if U equals V and zero otherwise. So since the Schubert polynomials form a basis, we can define their structure constants. So if we take the product SU of X times SV of X, we can re-express this in the basis of Schubert polynomials with coefficients CU, VW. So these structure constants are known to be non-negative in the account points of intersection of Schubert varieties. However, at this time, no combinatorial positive formula is known. There are many partial results and I'm going to mention some of them, uh, but I think many here would agree that at this point, it looks like finding a complete solution is a hopelessly difficult problem. So I'll mention the importance of Schubert polynomials. They're the unique polynomials that represent Schubert classes in the cohomology ring of every complete flag variety. So in general, the cohomology ring of the complete flag variety is isomorphic to the ring of co-invariance of the symmetric group. It's a quotient of the polynomial ring and n variables by the ideal generated by the homogeneous symmetric polynomials of positive degree. So of course, we can represent any element of the quotient by infinitely many polynomials, but the Schubert polynomials represent the Schubert classes. Uh, the same polynomial represents the same Schubert class, even as we add more variables. So now 
Uh, let's get into some results, positive formulas for multiplying Schubert polynomials. So an early one, though this was not phrased in terms of Schubert polynomials since they weren't even defined yet, but that's the chevalet monk formula. It's a formula for multiplying an arbitrary Schubert polynomial SU of X times a degree one Schubert polynomial S SK of X. And it expresses the result as a sum of S U T I J of X, where the transposition T I J ranges over all I less than or equal to K and J greater than K such that the length of U T I J is exactly the length of U plus one. I give a quick example there. Well, I'll mention short polynomials. Uh, which were studied much earlier than Schubert polynomials, but are a special case of Schubert polynomials. The Schubert polynomial SU of X is a sure polynomial with K variables if U has exactly one descent and is at position K. And this polynomial is symmetric in the variables X1 through XK. Now, uh, Schubert polynomials, uh, so sure polynomials with any given number of variables are Schubert polynomials, but if two sure polynomials have the same number of variables, we have a formula for multiplying them positively. We have the Littlewood Richardson rule. Uh, more generally, Conert in 1997 found a formula for multiplying an arbitrary Schubert polynomial by a sure polynomial, provided that the sure polynomial has the same number or more variables than the Schubert polynomial. Uh, though it is, is actively being worked on, it is currently still an open problem to find formula for multiplying an arbitrary Schubert polynomial by an arbitrary Schur polynomial. I'll mention Satili's Pieri formula. In 1996, Satili published a paper with the Pieri formula, which is really two formulas, a formula for multiplying an arbitrary Schubert polynomial by an elementary symmetric polynomial, and a formula for multiplying an arbitrary Schubert polynomial by a complete homogeneous symmetric polynomial. And Satili's proof is geometric. And in the same paper, he provided a rule for multiplying by a Schur polynomial, an arbitrary Schubert polynomial by a Schur polynomial corresponding to a partition of hook shape. So I'll mention puzzles. Um, the first puzzle rule, a puzzle rule for the Schur polynomial case it's actually more general than that. I'll get into that later. It was proved by Knudsen and Tao, 2003. Knudsen conjectured puzzle rule for all super structure constants in 1999. Turned out that didn't hold in all cases, but Boot, Kresh, Prabhu, and Timbakas proved that Newton's puzzle rule holds for super polynomials with at most two descents at fixed positions P and Q. Uh, earlier, Boot conjectured a puzzle rule for the three-step flag variety, which was proved by Newton and Zinjustin in 2020. And uh, I have an example of a three-step puzzle there. Now, another puzzle rule uh, is for the case of permutations with separated descents. Now, the, the paper I took uh, this puzzle from was from 2023, but I, there was an announcement of this result 2019. Newton and Zin Justin put forth positive formula for the coefficients of S U of X times S V of X, where there is an integer P such that U I is less than U I plus one for all I less than P, and V I is less than V I plus one for all I greater than P. Uh, this is known as U and V having separated descents and this is highly relevant to what I'm going to discuss later. It will come up again. And actually, uh, I looked at past talks in this seminar, uh, and a formula was presented for this by Huang at the seminar in 2021. So there's a connection between the Leibniz formula and the coefficients. It's easy to see that if we apply partial w to the product s u of x times s v of x, set x to zero, we get c u v w. But using the Leibniz formula, we can expand this in terms of the skew divided difference operators. And we get that applying the skew divided difference operator partial u w to the Schubert polynomial s v of x, setting x to zero gives us c u v w. Uh, this was proved by Kirillov in a 2007 paper about 
skew divided difference operators. So now uh, we're going we're gonna to get a little bit closer to where we want to be. We're going to define double Schubert polynomials. We're going to introduce a second infinite set of variables. These are y variables indexed by positive integers to obtain the ring zxy. And uh, almost identically to the original, to the ordinary Schubert polynomial case, we define the top double Schubert polynomial of Sn plus 1, Sw0n of x and y. And that's the product as i plus j ranges from 2 to n plus 1 of xi minus yj. And you may notice that if you set the y variables to 0, we get the ordinary Schubert polynomial corresponding to the same permutation. And that's true in general. So then for a permutation u, we define su of xy by the exact same formula. As for the ordinary Schubert polynomial, we apply partial u inverse w0n to sw0n of xy. Now, there's a standard paper that people cite for double Schubert double Schubert polynomials, and it's by Lesko and Schutzenberger. But I looked at that paper, and it doesn't seem to have double Schubert polynomials in it. So at least to me, the origin of double Schubert polynomials is unclear. Maybe someone else has a better idea. Uh, earliest I found uh, was 1990 book of McDonald notes on Schubert polynomials. Um, some properties with double Schubert polynomials, they form a basis for zxy as a module over zy. sw of x and y is homogeneous of degree lw with non-negative integer coefficients when expressed as polynomial in terms of linear terms xi minus yj. Now, if we set the x variables equal to the y variables, so then the, the double Schubert polynomial vanishes. So su of yy is 0 unless you use the identity. Now, the double Schubert polynomial corresponding to the identity is just 1. And we have a very similar formula as we do for ordinary Schubert polynomials. If we apply partial u to the double Schubert polynomial sv of xy and set x to y, we get 1 if u equals v and 0 otherwise. So double Schubert polynomials have their own structure constants since they form a basis as a module over zy. These structure constants C, U, V, W, Y are polynomials in Y. They're homogeneous of degree L, U plus L, V minus L, W, uh, such that we can expand the product S, U of X, Y times S, V of X, Y, and the coefficient of S, W of X, Y is C, U, V, W of Y. These coefficients also have a known positivity property. They have non-negative integer coefficients when they are expressed in terms as a polynomial in the negative simple roots yi plus 1 minus yi, which was proved by Graham in 2001. So if we set y to 0, uh, the term, the coefficients of positive degree vanish, and we're left with the ordinary Schubert polynomial uh, structure constants. So this is a generalization of Schubert polynomial multiplication. So double Schubert polynomials multiply like Schubert classes in the torus equivariant cohomology, all complete flag varieties. Similarly to Schubert polynomials, they do for torus equivariant cohomology what ordinary Schubert polynomials do for ordinary cohomology. So I'll also mention their dual to the divided difference operators over the polynomial ring. Uh, this, this dual ring is the nil heck ring defined by Costant and Kumar in 1986. So there is a co-product and the nil heck ring delta such that if we apply delta to partial w, you get the sum of over all u, v, and s infinity of the structure constant c u v w of x times partial u tensor partial v. And the tensor product is that of left modules over the polynomial ring, even though the divided difference operators don't commute with the polynomials, uh, this is multiplicative. This is a co-product. In 2002, Robinson found a Pieri formula for multiplying a double Schubert polynomial by a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial. The formula is gram-positive. 
and expresses the result in terms of restrictions to fixed points in equivariant cohomology. And Robinson's proof was primarily combinatorial. There are also puzzle rules for equivariant cohomology. In fact, the first puzzle rule in 2003 was a rule for the torus equivariant cohomology of the Grassmannian by Knudsen and Tao, which allows us to multiply factorial Schur polynomials and obtain coefficients that are gram positive. Uh, in 2015, Buch published a puzzle rule for the two-step flag variety, uh, which correspondingly allows us to multiply double Schubert polynomials that have two shared descents. That was also a puzzle rule. So back to the Leibniz formula, if we apply partial W to SU of XY times SV of XY and set X to Y, we get CUVW of Y. And we can similarly expand this in terms of the Leibniz formula to get that applying the skew divided difference operator partial UW to SV of XY, setting X to Y gives us the coefficient CUVW of Y. Now, what this illustrates is actually a property of the skew divided difference operators. So in general, for an arbitrary polynomial in X and Y, P of X and Y, we can express this in terms of the basis of double Schubert polynomials using the divided difference operators. Coefficient of SW of XY as partial W applied to P of XY setting X to Y. Now what the skew divided difference operators let us do is compute the coefficients of a product of an arbitrary polynomial with a double Schubert polynomial. So we can expand the product P of XY times SU of XY in terms of the basis and the coefficient of SW of XY is partial UW applied to P of XY and setting X to Y. And I can't go without mentioning another strong connection uh, but with the Leibniz formula and the coefficients, which actually holds uh, for all G mod B. Uh, if you apply partial W to a product PQ, you can expand this as a sum over all U and V in S infinity. And that's the torus equivariant cohomology ring structure constant CUVW of X times partial U applied to P times partial V by applied to Q. That was the main theorem of my dissertation. So now we move on to the molev sagan case. We're going to add Z variables to obtain the polynomial ring Z, X, Y, Z. Double Schubert polynomials form a basis of this ring as a module over Z, Y, Z. And we may define structure constant C, U, B, W, Y, Z by saying that in the product S, U of X, Y times S, V of X, Z, the coefficient of S, W of X, Y is C, U, B, W, Y, Z. So these are the coefficients we'll be interested in. So the, the, the place where this was originally considered was Molev and Sagan's 1999 paper uh, for multiplying factorial Schur polynomials in different sets of coefficient variables. So whenever an ordinary Schubert polynomial is a Schur polynomial, the double Schubert polynomial is a factorial Schur polynomial, and they depend on a partition and the number of x variables, and that's what determines the permutation. So Molev and Sagan found a complete Littlewood Richardson rule for multiplying two factorial Schur polynomials in the same number of x variables, one in x and y, and the other in x and z. And their formula was positive. Their coefficients were positive as polynomials in y, i minus c, j. However, it was not positive after the substitution z equals y in terms of y, i plus one minus y, i. This positivity result was not even known at the time the paper was published, but later, well, I've published a paper with a positive formula for factorial short polynomials in this sense. That was in 2009. So I have positivity conjecture I conjecture that like the coefficients for factorial Schur polynomials, 
the coefficient C V W Y Z has non-negative coefficients in terms of Y I minus C J for all U V and W. Now, relatedly, Kirillov conjectured in 2007 that C U V W of Y zero has non-negative coefficients as a polynomial in Y. Uh, what he actually conjectured was that applying a skew divided difference operator to a Schubert polynomial yields a polynomial with non-negative integer coefficients. Now, it, we don't lose as much information as it would seem when we set z to zero, um, because there's Cauchy formula expressing the coefficient c u v w y z in terms of the z equals zero coefficients and the uh, ordinary Schubert polynomials in negative z. So I've been doing some computer testing of these positivity conjectures. I verified Kirillov's conjecture up to n equals six. That took about 66 hours to run on my laptop with 11 threads. And I verified that CUBWYZ has nine negative coefficients in terms of YI minus CJ up to n equals five, which after vast improvements, my program actually only takes about five minutes to run. Uh, however, I've been trying to test the conjecture for n equals six on a machine with 64 cores and 128 gigabytes of RAM. Since January, we've been running the program continuously uh, that verifies the result as positive using linear programming. And we're going one degree at a time. We verified the conjecture is true up to coefficients of degree six and degree seven is currently running. And so the coefficients can be up to degree 15, but we know the degree 14 and 15 coefficients are positive. So we have to test up to degree 13. So uh, for the remainder of the talk, we will be trying to find positive formulas in terms of yi minus cj for the coefficient cuvwyz, which is partial uw applied to sv of xz and setting x to y. Now, importantly, uh, SV of XZ has no Y variables. So usually when we're substituting Y after we've applied a skew divided difference operator, some cancellation occurs, but that doesn't happen here. So we're really computing CUVW of XZ, which is partial UW applied to SV of XZ. Um, and uh, we can take a break here. Okay.